This is the Horse Radio Network. You've just landed in episode 490 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by Eco Gold, leader in high technology saddle pads and protective horse boots. Hi, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is from Dr. Jenny Johnson, who runs the Oak Hill Shockwave and Veterinary Chiropractic Center that is based in Calabasas, California. Committed to the maintenance and of performance horses as well as family pets, she strives to keep the animals at their peak of health through the use of shockwave therapy and chiropractic care. Today's tip is an example of a lesser known application for shockwave therapy, and it's from the Jumping Radio Show, episode 75. But before we get to today's tip, a word about today's sponsor, Eco Gold. Eco Gold is a leader in high tech, problem solving saddle pads and horse boots. And how do they do it? Science, of course. Eco Gold uses different technologies and materials to solve different issues. Innovation means dumping the old fashioned one size fits all mentality. They've developed five different lines of saddle pads to address the most important issues for equine athletes friction, stability, fit, security, and comfort. And Eco Gold knows your equipment needs to be user friendly as well as effective. So their products are stylish and easy to care for. And they're made in their own factory in Montreal, Canada, so you know the materials and workmanship are the absolute best. Ask for Eco Gold saddle pads, protective boots, and coolers by name at your local tax store or visit them online at ecogold.ca. Now, enjoy today's tip. Jenny's joining us uh, this week with a client of hers, Sana Ferrara, who is actually a show jumping into Hunter Jumpers herself. And they're going to tell us about a very interesting case study, which involves the treatment using shockwave therapy. So let's hear from Dr. Jenny Johnson and Sana. Well, hi, Jenny. Welcome back to the show. You, you've had a bit of a summer break from us, haven't you? I have, Chris, but it's, uh, it's been a busy one. Good. Good. Well, great to have you back on and with these very popular veterinary segments. And uh, you've brought a client along with you again because this is, a, as I say, the veterinary segments are popular. But this particular idea that we had of doing case studies is is particularly popular. So uh, tell us about the the case that you've brought with you today. Well, the case today is a horse that I've seen, and we have a trainer on as well uh, that I was called in to see after it had sustained an injury to his right hind semimembranosus and semitendinosus and had uh, post-injury had developed quite a large seroma, hematoma, abscess, kind of a combination of all of that. And the primary care veterinarian had uh, contacted me because he was concerned that the horse was at risk for potentially developing a fibrotic myopathy, which is where the muscles in that area post-injury may have healed incorrectly and healed as a fibrotic uh, mass as opposed to normal uh, muscle tissue that would have the normal elasticity. And those horses that that develop a fibrotic myopathy frequently have a mechanically abnormal way of going and it can significantly alter their gait. So his concern and the concern of the trainer and owner also was that this was a potential um, side effect of this injury and the, uh, you know, I was called in basically to evaluate would shockwaves be helpful and if so, how do we proceed from here and, and where do we go? Great. Well, our listeners, will, to the regular listeners to the show will know that, of course, you specialize in equine chiropractic and, and uh, shockwave therapy. So um, let's introduce your client, uh, Sana Ferrara. Sana, welcome to the Jumping Radio Show. Hi, thank you. Great to have you uh, join us, and because this is an interesting case, tell us a, a little bit. You're in the you're a trainer, as Jenny mentioned, in the hunter jumper and jumper world. Tell us about this particular horse and the problem that you presented to Jenny. Well, this is um, my personal horse, and he's a jumper, and he's a little bit more of a hot blooded type horse. He's part thoroughbred, and he um, tends to get kind of rowdy in the turnout. And he likes to play kind of hard. 
and he had an injury in our turnout where he ended up colliding um, with the fence, and we have this um, very sturdy oil pipe um, welded metal fencing, and he somehow, um, we're not sure if he tried to jump out or, or what, but he ended up uh, sliding along it and impacting the heavy metal fence. And um, it fell down, was very sore, um, could barely walk for a couple of days. And um, we were treating him uh, for, you know, just a general body soreness with banamine and, and stall rest. And um, he ended up, about a week after the accident, developing a really large hematoma on his right hind, um, hind end area. It was huge. It was like the size of a basketball. And my regular veterinarian came out, and we proceeded to to do a procedure on it, put a drain in, um, and start trying to drain it. And that's when he told me that these types of injuries can turn into the fibrotic myopathy, and I was very concerned that that was something that would um, have an impact on his ability to continue being a jumper after and I asked him if shockwave therapy might be an option because I had previously worked with Dr. Johnson on a couple other sports injuries that we used shockwave therapy on that healed very well. And um, I knew that it had other applications as well. And he thought it was a good idea. And so that's when we um, had Dr. Johnson come out to start working on it. So, Jenny, when you... So I first saw the horse, what was your immediate evaluation? When I first saw the horse, the drain had been removed, but there was an area um, on the semimembranosus, semitendinosus, which is directly, if you were standing directly behind the horse, it would be just, in the, on this horse, it was the right hind, it would be to the right of the tail on that large group of muscles there. Uh, the drain had been removed, and so there was no longer anything draining at that point, but on measuring the abnormal area, I believe it was about 10 inches wide by about 10 inches uh, tall and several inches deep. Obviously, I couldn't measure exactly how deep. And the tissue was very abnormal feeling. It was beginning to feel fibrotic. The fibers were not uh, in a linear fashion the way I would expect. There was a fairly large uh, what felt like a cavity in the central portion where the hematoma seroma had been and and I was starting to fill in. But generally, the whole area just felt significantly abnormal in terms of the quality of the musculature underneath and the quality of the tissue. And And what did you evaluate in terms of soundness and mobility and flexibility? Well, I did not do a soundness evaluation per se. The horse was on stall rest at that time and was walking reasonably well. Uh, I did not trot the horse. This was an area that clearly was uncomfortable for him and um, was my, my larger concern was what are the effects going to be down the road. And that's what we really thought would be an appropriate application for shockwave therapy. The shockwave therapy is... Uh, has a very potent anti-inflammatory effect. It also causes the stem cells in the horse's body to come to that area. It helps with the linear arrangement of fibers. It stimulates fibroblast formation. And it also, interestingly, has a fairly potent antibacterial effect. Now, I don't know that the antibacterial effect would have been particularly relevant at this point in this case because the, there was no longer anything draining and it was not an open wound but I was looking more for the anti-inflammatory effects and also the um, effect of potentially helping to have those tissues heal in a more normal fashion. And so now tell us a little bit more about your horse. What what age, what breed, uh, what size is he? He's, he's, um, he's an 8-year-old and he's an appendix thoroughbred and he's about 16 hands. Um, so he's a smaller sized horse. And so, uh, on 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 this evaluation, then Jenny, what did that? How did that determine the the treatment and uh, and prognosis for this horse? And over what time period are we looking at? Well, when I saw the horse again, as I said, this was a fairly large area. You know, I think Sana described it appropriately. You know, it initially had looked like a, a basketball, and it wasn't quite as big as a basketball when I saw it, but maybe 
three quarters the size of a basketball in terms of area that I could palpate that was abnormal. And I, my overriding and overwhelming concern is how are we going to get this to heal so that the musculature heals in a physiologically appropriate way so that the horse can continue to do his job as a jumper. If that area healed as a fibrotic uh, mass or fibrotic tissue, then that could significantly impact his ability to bring his leg forward, to have normal flexion and extension of that leg, and also uh, strength to push off from that leg going over jumps. So it was critical, in my opinion, that we do everything we can to try and stimulate healing in as normal a fashion as, as possible. And, and tell us a little bit about the time frame then, from the time you saw him and the treatment plan that you uh, implemented, Jen. When I first saw him, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sonal, but I believe it was about a month after the initial injury. And Yeah, I, I think it was right after the drain came out, which was, that, yeah, that, was, that would be about right. Yeah, about a month. And my, my feeling at that point was that I needed to be fairly aggressive in terms of treating the area. So I set up a protocol uh, of three treatments spaced at about 10 days apart, 8 to 10 days apart, and which is a little bit closer together than I normally do shockwave treatments when I'm treating, say, for example, a suspensory ligament injury. But I thought in this case I really wanted to address this quickly and aggressively and have a very potent anti-inflammatory effect and stimulate as much healing as quickly as I could. And it was very interesting. Between the first and the second treatment, which I believe was about 10 days, um, there was a significant improvement in the appearance and also uh, how the area felt on palpation or examination. Uh, the size, the measurable size of the area involved decreased by about 50% in that first treatment interval. There was It was much less noticeable even just looking at it. The, there were not the protruding areas of clearly abnormal tissue that had been present when I initially saw the horse. And the texture of the musculature was significantly improved in that it was softer. It appeared more pliable, which was what we were going for. And then between the second and third treatment, again, that was about 10 days. And again, about a 50% reduction in size in the area that was involved and, and actually quite a significant improvement in how the musculature felt on examination and palpation. Uh, you know, a much smaller area was now down to, if I went from the most, the, the most, um, the largest area that I could possibly include in the measurement, it was about four inches by four inches. But I would say about half of that was actually still feeling a little bit fibrotic. The rest of it was just, it wasn't quite normal, but it certainly was dramatically improved from what it had been initially the area had shrunk down in size in that it was flatter, it was more uh, anatomically correct in its, uh, in its position, and the musculature felt very pliable. Uh, there there was, was not a lot of fibrosis that was palpable, and the area where there had been a big cavity appeared to be filling in with more normal tissue. It wasn't a, a large fibrotic uh, chunk of tissue there. It was healing very well, and, and the horse... Uh, now, I think Sanaa can speak to, has gone back to work and is in full flat work and has been doing very well. And that was, so we treated him really over a fairly short period of time, you know, about a three-week interval for all three treatments. And, you know, I've had some quite dramatic results from that. And I'm very pleased with how the horse is looking at this point in time. You know, well, Sanaa, you can, uh, I, I think, tell us exactly how the horse is, is looking to you and the difference this has made and, and how he's responded to the treatment and to be back in work already. Sure, yeah. I mean, he's pretty much now, like, uh, pr pretty much 100% better. You can't even tell where this injury occurred. And it was very large and very grotesque looking when he had the hematoma. So, um, I'm, I, I mean, it's, it's really amazing. And like Do Dr. Johnson said, he, each treatment, you could see the area and you could feel it getting better every time. And um, from my observation, just feeling the area every day and, and checking the horse's leg regularly throughout the days, um, we really felt a difference like the very next day after each shockwave treatment. It, it seemed like it was almost instantaneous. Um, 
it was really amazing. And the horse is completely better now. And um, I would highly, highly recommend shockwave um, therapy as a treatment for this type of a um, injury or anything else. I've, all my experiences with it have been um, like it, it's very effective and um, it really um, healed very nicely. I'm extremely happy with that. Well, well, Jenny, that's the, I would imagine that's the kind of response you would hope for with the shockwave treatment to demonstrate how effective it can be. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jenny. What what next for your horse? Um, well, he needs to get going and get back um, to his jumping, so hopefully he'll be moving along and moving up the levels. And now that he, he's got his... Uh, his engine all repaired hopefully he'll jump even bigger than before <laughs> <laughs> well we hope so where are you where are you planning to show and where do you normally show um well i'm in this i'm in southern california so you know we go to the shows at the los angeles equestrian center and um some of the ones further south so we're primarily in that area well terrific well thank you very much for for joining us this week and telling us about your horse what's his name we didn't find out his name um, his his bar name is Ace, but his show name is Access Denied. Access Denied. All right. Well, yes. uh, obviously no <laughs> Access Denied right now. The very best of luck That's with right. you. And thank you very much thank for you. joining us. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jenny, again for bringing us this case. And we'll look forward to your next installment here on the Jumping Radio Show. Thank you, Chris. And I think, uh, you know, sort of the take-home message here that I'd like our, our listeners to uh, have is that there are a lot of applications for shockwave therapy that are are extend well beyond the more commonly known applications where you're treating tendons and ligament injuries. And I think um, this just provides an excellent example of one type of case that's sort of out of that normal range where shockwave can be useful. And, and there are many, many other areas that it can be very useful uh, in helping the healing process. Well, there you go. Thanks, Dr. Johnson and Chris Stafford of The Jumping Radio Show. To listen to all of Dr. Johnson's tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and go to the Experts drop-down menu on the left. All of the experts are alphabetized and easy to find. You can also listen to the entire episode of the Jumping Radio Show by going to www.jumpingradio.com. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover. You can subscribe to all of the great shows of the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or MP3 player. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse! The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.